If you've been following me, you probably already saw how to find a niche, finding ideas for a business name, getting images used for your online business, and all that good stuff. But if you're new to the channel, then I encourage you to watch those videos as well. But at this point, I think we're pretty much ready to create a website for our online business. So to get started, there are two things that you're going to need to create a blog or a website. And the first thing you're going to need is a domain. And we briefly talked about this in one of my videos when finding a business name. But uh, this is going to be part one of two where we're going to look at the domain names. And part two would be the web hosting. But I highly recommend you also watch that video too before pulling the trigger on the purchase. Because it, you're going to need a web hosting service to fully utilize the domain name. For those that don't know what a domain name is, it's the address of your website on the internet. The website being the address of the house and the internet being the street or road that your house is on, similar to that effect. And this is what you need, you know, for people to come visit you. And without an address, how do people know where to find you? Pretty simple, right? And technically, there's way more to it than that. And I'm not going to get into it too much because it's outside the scope of what we're trying to do. And that's not what you guys are here for. But if you're interested, you can always do a quick Google search on domain names and you'll find tons of information on it. But do you really need to buy a domain name to create a website? Technically, no, you, you don't need one because there are some web hosting services out there that allow you to create a website even if you don't have a domain. They would just let you use something called a subdomain. So for instance, if I were to go to use you know, Wix's free hosting service, my website address might look like this. And this is what a subdomain can typically look like. And all it really is is a folder within the host's provider's domain. And they're letting you use it because their domain is already registered. But then you're stuck with their domain in your address. So in this instance, the first part of the address is the name uh, that you use to register with Wix. And the second part is Wix's actual domain. And then you'll have your actual name of your website. There's a time and place where you would want to use a subdomain. But the main reason why I don't use one is from a marketing and audience accessibility perspective. I don't want to make it harder for my audience or potential audience to remember my site or to be able to refer my site to somebody else. I mean, what do you guys think? Would it be easier for me to recommend you to come to my site at username hvx.wixsite.com forward slash hvxfocus? Or would it be easier for you to remember me by hvxfocus.com? Having a domain really helps users to identify your brand. Another important reason not to go with a subdomain is that it could affect your overall website SEO. Like internal linking is an issue because each subdomain can be considered an external link. So there's no way to link to another page on your site. And there are other technical reasons as well. But at least for me, those are the main ones that I am concerned about. But regardless, I recommend you get yourself a domain name. It's a small price to pay for a better user experience and better engagement with the audience. But in order for you to use a custom name, you will need to purchase a domain name from a registrar. So I'll just break this down in the most simplest terms. So all domain names and their respective owner's information are held in a database that is governed by some sort of registry operator. And then these registries will contract with domain registrars like domain.com or Namecheap to help us register a domain name with the registries and for an annual fee, which is also part of the cost when you buy the domain uh, name from the domain registrars. So basically, you would go to a registrar like Namecheap and purchase the domain name from them, and then they'll register the domain name with the registries, and then the registries will make all the appropriate changes needed to attach your information to the domain that you purchased. Then all that's left for you to do is to point that domain name to the IP address of the website that you created with the web hosting service. Alternatively, you can buy your domain with the same company as your web hosting service, and they'll do all that for you, which Namecheap also provides web hosting service as well if you decide to go with them. Once again, there's more to this than that, but at the bare minimum, this is what you need to know for our purposes. So how can you buy a domain name? There's generally two ways to buy a domain name. You can buy it with the web hosting service, but not all of them offer the option to purchase a domain name. But you can also buy it separately, and then you attach the domain name to your website. Both are fine options, but should you buy it separately? And there are a few reasons why you may want to consider one over the other. And I know, I know, I'm, I'm giving you guys a lot of things to think about. But I want to arm you guys with enough information so that you can make an informed decision. It's your business after all, so just bear with me until the end, and I'll do my best to give you all the information that you need. So there are a few reasons why you would want to buy your domain with your hosting service. The obvious would be convenience. It's convenient to manage your domain name with the web hosting service all from one company instead of managing them both separately through different companies. The second reason would be compatibility. 
if you purchase a domain from a hosting service, it's less likely that you run into any DNS problems. It can still happen though, it's just less likely because they will do all the configurations needed to run your website with that domain name. Third, the bundle deals. A lot of times when you purchase the domain name with the web hosting service, they will give you a significant discount on a domain name. It can even be free of charge. Just be careful, it's usually only free for or discounted for the first year or so. And then when you renew it, it can get pricely, so you need to be real careful about this. And a few reasons why you want to keep your domain name separate from your hosting service. The first one is security. If for some reason your website gets hacked, your domain name may be safe even if your hosting service is not, and or vice versa. It just makes it easier for you to deal with if you run into these types of problems. The second reason is to prevent vendor lock-in. It makes it easier to leave the web hosting service. Sometimes if you may not want to be with your web hosting service anymore or if their renewal prices are just too high and you want to leave them and you still want to keep your domain name. Sometimes hosting services will have policies and contracts to prevent you from taking your domain name with you. But if you purchase your domain name from a different company, you don't have to worry about losing your name which you worked so hard to build your reputation on. And third is versatility. Let's say you have multiple domains and each domain has different needs or that one hosting service can't provide you. It's much easier to manage all your domains in one place while having them pointed to different web hosting services from different companies that have different requirements. So those are the few things you may want to consider when you decide to buy your domain with the hosting service or buy it separately. But you need to sit down and think about which direction work best for your needs. But here's a list of reputable registrars that you could use to purchase your domain from. And don't forget to like this video and follow me. Your support really does help us grow this channel. So how much does a domain name cost? Generally a domain name would cost between 10 to 20 US dollars per year. But if you use a top level domain like .com, .net, .org, it could cost more or less depending on which one you choose. And every register has a different pricing scheme so some will charge more than others for the same name. Here's the thing guys. Essentially all the registrars like Namecheap and Domain.com will register your domain with a registry that registers your name in the same database. So the reality is why not just go with the cheaper option? Because you're getting the same result for a cheaper price. What really sets the registers apart from each other is the features and the services that they offer other than registering your domain name. But I'm going to reiterate here again, make sure you read the fine print on renewal prices and terms because what may seem like a good deal may turn out to be a deal breaker. So what I'm about to tell you is super important. Regardless of who you buy your domain name from, I highly recommend you get domain privacy protection, which can also be referred to as who is protection. And why do you need it? Well, when you purchase your domain name, most if not all the registrars require you to register uh, with your information that matches your payment method, like your credit card or debit card. And your name, address, email, phone number that you use for your credit card will be publicly available if someone decides to search for your domain in the who is search. And privacy protection is going to put random information for that domain's contact instead of your own. Essentially hiding your contact information from marketers and scammers. And I made a mistake of not getting any protection once before. And there will be people and companies out there that are always looking for information to scam or market information to you. And let me tell you, I was bombarded with phone calls, emails, and even physical mail from entities that want to sell me something or they're just straight up scams. And to this day, I still receive random scams because of it. And if you decide to use fake information for your domain name, just be aware that if the registries find out, they will terminate your domain name. Is your business worth it? I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to take that risk. And you also may run into an issue where someone else decides that your domain belongs to them. And how will you defend it if you use fake information? It's just a huge hassle and could possibly be very costly if you try to fight it. Alternatively, some registrars will allow you to use PO boxes when you register your domain. And most of the information will be pulled from that location of the P.O. Box. But P.O. Boxes usually run around 60 USD a year, whereas privacy protection only costs 5 to 8 USD a year. I'd rather get the privacy protection than the P.O. Box, but there may be some cases where P.O. Boxes work better, but that's up to you to figure out. But it is a viable option if you don't want to use your contact information. But I'm a big fan of Namecheap because when you buy a domain for name from them, you get privacy protection for free and for the life of the domain when you purchase it from them. That's not the only reason why I like them, but it's definitely a nice bonus and I highly recommend them if you do decide to buy a domain name. Regardless, do yourself a favor and get some sort of way to protect your information and get some peace of mind.
but don't just take my word for it. There's tons of information out there and I'd advise you to get as many different opinions and views as possible before making your decision. And don't forget to follow me so you'll know when I release the second part of this video, which is going to help you guys pick and choose a web hosting service. And if you want more details, then head on over to my website for the long form version of this topic. And if you like this type of content, then hitting that like button will go a long way in supporting this channel. And feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know once my next video gets released. And if you've been following me thus far, by now you should know that the links on this page or any of my other content will most likely contain an affiliate link. It's free for you to use, but if you do make a purchase, then I receive compensation that really helps support this channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.